What is peace? Are we talking about an absence of conflict? As we look at the peace offering, let's start by understanding some of what peace really is. You know, the Bible says in Matthew, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And um, peace is something I think is often misunderstood. Militarily, we sometimes call detente peace. That's the absence of conflict, or, um, you know, the original meaning is to loosen the bowstring so you're not ready to shoot, okay? But oftentimes in our life, what we call peace is really calm. You know, it's not noisy, so it's peaceful. But peace is far more than that. You can be someplace quiet where there's no armed conflict, where there's no tension in the air, and you can be sitting there completely not at peace. You can be sitting there feeling all kinds of anxiety and all kinds of things. So peace is what happens when God shows up. Peace is what God promises us. Peace is what we get to carry with us. So um, I think uh, oftentimes we end up with a little bit of a drama queen going on. Sometimes we end up with drama queen going on as Christians because we need to feel like, you know, we're important enough to be in a battle with the enemy and and all that. And so we, we can talk about all the things that are going on. Oh, I'm being attacked here and this is happening in my life and that's going on and all of these things. And I guess if you're simply stating fact, that's fine. But if you don't have peace in your heart about it, then you need to do some work on, on getting there. Now, the peace offering itself is described in Leviticus 7. Um, and this was an offer of thanksgiving. And so um, I want to break that down a little bit. I just want to simply make sure we dot some I's and cross some T's here with regards to peace. The peace of God is available to you always. Let me say that again. The peace of God is available to you always. You just need to come to God and get your peace. Okay? Now, the sacrifice, uh, the peace offering, had several different reasons that you would do the, the peace offering. The first one was just because. Just just because God, just because you ever, you ever told your spouse, you know, I, I love you just because, and I bought you this gift just because I just, I was thinking of you here. It's what I call the just because, right? The just because offering peace offerings. God, I just, wow, <laughs> you're great. Just because you're you. I want to bring a sacrifice to you. God, I just want to say thank you just for being you. And that really comes out of a grateful heart. The peace offering could also be to fulfill a vow. You know, um, if you do this, I'll do this. Right? Or... You know, if this happens, if I hit the lottery, I give you, you know, whatever. I, you've heard all, we've all heard someone make a vow of, of something like that. I will do this. If you do this, I will, I will take care of you this way. That's, um, that's the idea of uh, a peace offering is to fulfill that vow. Okay. I'm going to do what I said I would do and fulfill that vow. And then a peace offering can also be an offering uh, of thanks. Okay. Um, it's an offering of thanks. I thank you for what you did. And certainly we can do that with God. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for all that you've done. 
Now, it, it just in our human existence, particularly in relationships, you know, we sometimes have just because offerings, if you will, sometimes fulfill a vow offerings and sometimes, you know, thanks offerings, sometimes to change the tide a little bit and make some peace. So I'll give you an example. So you, you bring a piece of jewelry uh, home to your wife and you say, hey, this is just because I love you, babe. That's a peace offering. And you say, you know what? I brought you flowers because it's our anniversary. And so that's, you know, we're, we're married. We have our anniversary and it kind of there's an, a vow there that I'm going to recognize our anniversary. So there's those flowers. And then there's the day you show up with chocolates, flowers, and a piece of jewelry, and you say, look, I'm really sorry about what I said, <laughs> um, and I need to make some peace here and, and, and home, so here's, here's my offering. So that's three different ways to look at it. But our thanks offering that we bring to God is, is really thank you for what you've done. Thank you for who you are. Thank you. Thank you, God. And from that, from the peace offering, we start to develop an attitude of peace. In other words, if we're looking for the opportunity to give thanks, to create an opportunity for God's peace to reign, if we're really, if we're really looking at it from that perspective, it will cr create within us an attitude of peace. Uh, the ability to access peace, to, to access that promise that blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Daniel in the Old Testament was really a peacemaker and God continually blessed him and brought him, brought him forward. Did he take stands on things? Yes, but, but there's that attitude of peace that exists. And here's the other thing that's interesting. The peace offering is one of the offerings where you could not offer a bird. You know, we talked a few weeks ago about the fact that the bird as an offering in some instances was really aimed at those that were poor, being able to offer something up without having great cost. And um, that it, it, you know, it gave access to, to those that did not have much. And the peace offering does not allow for the offering of a sacrifice of a bird. And part of that is, I, th I think, part of that is because our attitude of offering with a peace offering should be one that we are trying to give our, 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 our best. We're trying to give what we can. And I'm not saying that, that it alleviates somebody who's poor or anything like that. I'm not saying that. But what, what you have to give in a peace offering um, is, is something that's potentially of value to you. Okay? It's not necessarily that it, it, it has great value overall, but it has value to you. And it, and it truly, the, there's, a, there's a cost there that's, that's genuine. Does that make sense? You're not, you're not doing something um, just to, you know, dot an I or check a box. So oh, I did my peace offering. I, I did this. I took care of that. But it, it really is the ability to be thankful. We've all had someone say something to us. You know, we've, we've done something and they go, oh, yeah, thanks. And it just doesn't feel very good because it's not very genuine. No, Thanks. But then we've also had somebody who goes, oh, I am so blessed by what you did. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, and you walk away going, you know, okay, that, was, that person was thankful. And so I'm not talking to you about trying to become a um, <clears throat> low-budget actor and pretending to be something you're not and you're thankful when you're not or whatever. But I'm just saying the peace offering was some, a place where you gave – and it did so with a genuine thankfulness, okay? A genuine thankfulness. Now, as we've tied this uh, 
these things together a little bit the you know the seven sins and the sacrifices and all that within this within this uh, last few weeks the next sin of the seven sins is the sin of sloth or slothfulness and slothfulness is really laziness right Laziness, um, I, I, we all have different ideas of what lazy is, I suppose, but laziness, um, slothfulness go together. The sin of slothfulness is a failure to act and utilize one's talents. It's a failure to act and utilize one's talents. That's slothfulness. I could do that, but I'm not going to. I could do that, but I'm not sure that I'm interested in putting that much effort into it. That's slothful or lazy. And part of that comes from the fact that our talents, if we rightly recognize our talents as a gift from God, then I'm failing to use the gift from God as it was intended. That's lazy. That's slothful. Um, the answer to, to the sin of slothfulness really comes from this idea. It's the placing the interest of others above a life of ease or relaxation. Placing the interest of others above a life of ease or relaxation. Get it your own self. What, do I look like your slave? I know, kids have said that for years. It's not my job. It's not my responsibility. What's in it for me? Who's going to even know if I do? Who's going to know if I don't? These are all ways for us to excuse our, fa our failure to act. It's ways to excuse our, our failure to utilize our talents. We don't want to be slothful. We want to be grateful for the talents that God has given us. We want to be thankful for the talents that God has given us. We want to be thankful for the things that he has brought to us. And that is, that is our sacrifice of a peace offering, is that thankfulness where we go and say, thank you, God. And it is a pure antidote for being slothful. If we become proactive in being thankful, if it becomes a part of a lifestyle to go and be thankful, It used to be a much different world that we lived in, but families all over, not just necessarily families in churches or whatever, would ask a blessing over their meal. And the, the blessing over a meal was primarily a thankfulness, thankful for God's provision, thankful for being together and having time together. And we express that in that prayer. We were thankful, God, we thank you for the, the bounty that you've provided that we're about to partake of. We, th we thank you for being able to be together and to be here. And we thank you just because, God, just because you're wonderful. And we ask that you bless this meal for us. And I think we've gotten far away from that in our society. There were times of, you know, predefined thankfulness that, that I think took, took place, and we've gotten far away from that. In our churches, we, we used to have testimony service, and they kind of morphed into sometimes the storytelling hour or whatever, and, and that was uh, probably not good. But the testimony service was an opportunity for someone to stand up and give thanks, testify, To what God had done. And, you know, we, we've dialed church into where, you know, it's 
we've got the worship time, we got announcements, we got the message, altar call, we're out of here. And um, we can run them, you know, some churches can run them like clockwork, you know, 60 minutes flat, 45 minutes flat, whatever. Um, and I'm not trying to put down that organizational process per se, but when we come to God's house, we should be coming here to meet God. We should be coming here to worship God. We should be coming here to lift one another up, to, to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It's not important that we run the whole thing in 62 minutes. It's important that we have a heart full of thankfulness, that we bring that peace offering that comes from thanks and start out by maybe just telling God thanks just because. And we give thanks out of a grateful heart for what God has done. We give thanks out of that. And, you know, when we have a thankful heart, when we have an idea of being um, uh, gracious in, in our, our attitudes and uh, towards one another and thankful for the opportunities, you know, there's people that can irritate you, and you can be, still be thankful that, that they're there, right? But when we have that attitude of thankfulness, we develop an attitude of peace, and it really comes from that process that I'm trusting in God, that I'm thankful to God, that I'm, I'm willing to let God be the one in, in charge and I don't have to do it. And I'm willing to do my part. Whatever that is, God, whatever you want me to do today, I'm willing to do that. When we get in that mode, when we get into that attitude, we open up the opportunity for peace to begin to grow in our midst for drama to go away. It's really hard to get all wrapped around the axle with somebody who's at peace. You know, you just look like a raving lunatic, right? And uh, we talked last week about the guilt offering, and, you know, if you put the two of those things together um, where someone is just trying to make sure that they're doing exactly right. I'm, I'm sorry, even, you know, if I didn't know I offended you, and you put that with, I'm really thankful that you're here. I'm really thankful for what God's doing in our lives together, in your life, my life. It's hard to have a bunch of conflict. There's caring that takes place, one for another. There's an opportunity to minister one to another. And one of the things I, I, I believe is in the offing uh, here in our midst and in the church here in America, I think you're going to see more of it as churches really return to some of the base roots that they need to return to. And that is uh, body ministry. The, the, the reality of, of the members of the church body ministering to one another it's not necessarily a big name person over here or there, or a big event kind of thing over there, but it is the the individuals within the church having the ability to minister to the needs of the other individuals in the church. It's the ability to tell someone, I really am glad you're here. I really appreciate you. You know, you are just someone that I, I, I see you walking through these situations and you're letting God move in your life. And it really touches my heart when I see that. Being complimentary, not fake compliments, but truly complimentary because we're paying attention and we're offering up that peace offering just because. We open that door for God's peace. We open that door for self um, uh sufficiency within the within the body to help each other out relying on god letting god use us to help others instead of having that slothful idea of i don't i don't need to do that it's not my job i said the sin of slothfulness placing the interest of others the the, the getting past that is placing the interest of others above a life of ease or relaxation. It's easy to say nothing. 
It's easy to sacrifice nothing. It's easy to stay in the drama mode and have excuses for everything. But it takes that idea of bringing the offering, that peace offering, bringing that offering just because, bringing that offering of thanks that opens up the door for God's peace to come in and permeate each aspect of each of our lives. And that's powerful. That's powerful in so many different ways. And so th this morning, I would just ask you to stop and, and think. And, and, and there's maybe a little confusion when you talk about peace versus uh, thanks. But um, the peace stems from thankfulness, if you will. Peace, this peace offering stems from that, that thankful attitude. Maybe find someone today that you can um, just recognize just because. Maybe make sure, do a quick check. You know, is there anything I was supposed to do that I haven't done? And is there, is there some place where I need to show some thankfulness? Not phony baloney thankfulness, but truly show thankfulness for what God has done. Truly show thankfulness for maybe what someone has done in your life and, and just be able to say thank you and be able to rest in that and let God's peace go with you. I said earlier that the peace of God is available to you always. And that is so true. When you walk into a room, do you bring peace or do you bring conflict? Do you bring nothing and you, your attitude becomes influenced by the room? Or do you have the ability to walk in and have God's peace go, go with you? And the answer is that you, you have that available to you always. You always have that available. But it starts with having that thankful heart before God and just being able to say thank you, God, so much. And, and for all that you do, God, and, and you can ask for his peace. God, let your peace go with me. Let me, let me bring peace into this situation. And that doesn't involve me coming in telling somebody how to do things or, or whatever. It, it involves me being at peace with God, me being in a right relationship with God, me having that peace of God with me when I walk into the room. And we can all do that. So I challenge you to just do a little inventory today. Take a look and see. Let's let God's peace go with us. Let's be quick to give thanks and bring a peace offering. And that's it for this week. Thank you.